So on my screen, I have a custom component showing training courses and when those courses are offered. Basically, these are sessions. Now, a session has a start date, an end date, an instructor, and some other information as well as some requirements, or we might say prerequisites. Now, this component also requires some logic. For example, the end date should not precede the start date, and a user should not enter a prerequisite course code unless the prerequisite checkbox is selected. Now, let's focus on this prerequisite checkbox. So when checked, the course code is enabled. And when unchecked, it's disabled. That sounds easy enough. Let's check it out. Here is the logic in Application Designer. Again, it seems simple enough. If the checkbox is Y, then the course code should be enabled. Otherwise, disable the course code. Let's see, I count one, two, three, four lines. Okay, could we write it another way? Here, what about this? And let's comment out the other code, save it. Hey, it compiles, must work. <laughs> what about this? Does it say the same thing? That one liner at the top, does it say the same thing? Let's test it and find out. Oh, did you see that message that just popped up when I clicked on the checkbox? Yeah, you've probably seen that before, that data integrity error. Basically, the component processor is saying, hey, you changed the code and we need to reload. Keep that in mind. I want to talk about it as well, but no, wait, let's save that for another session. Anyway, let's load a row of data and test it out. That's awesome. It seems to be working, right? Pretty cool. A one-liner. You might say it's even sophisticated. So let's see. Let's call this one liner, the top one, option one. And down here, let's call this one option two. In our people code classes, I regularly ask my students, which option do you prefer? And I wanna ask you as well, what about you? What do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. But I'll tell you, my students, they overwhelmingly choose option two. Now let's run these two options through a design pattern filter. First, let's talk about Spartan programming. Now there is a bit more to Spartan programming, but in a nutshell, Spartan programming favors minimalism, fewer variables and fewer lines. I would say option one satisfies the Spartan diet, but there's another principle I like to apply and I call it the Martin Fowl, Fowler, <laughs> the Martin Fowler, any fool principle. Martin Fowler said, any fool can write code that a computer can understand. Good programmers write code that humans can understand. So let's ask, can a human understand option one? Well, <laughs> yes, but how long did you need to stare at that line to figure it out? So here's another principle. I call it the don't make me think principle. It's actually a book title for web design, but I believe it applies just about anywhere. Clearly, we have to think harder to understand option one. Okay, so wait, is there some middle ground? Here, what if we refactor option one into say option 1.5? I think what makes that statement option one difficult to read is that we have a condition and an assignment. So breaking those up and aliasing the condition, I think that makes it easier to read. Basically, I believe we improve readability by using a variable as an alias. Now I have to admit, I really like this option 1.5. But does that matter? <laughs> I mean, is there an I like it principle? I don't think so. Anyways, what do you think? What's your take on this? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. 
But enough about patterns. How about a couple of people code tricks before we go? Now, the start date in our component is, of course, a date. Here, let's try to use message box to display the start date. And let's see, let's use the TRN CRSE SES start date. Oops. Perfect. Okay, let's see what happens when I try to save. Oh, you can't pass a date to the message box function. You see, message box expects a string. Now, there are a handful of functions I could use to transform a date to a string, but hey, this is usually for debugging purposes, so I want something quick and dirty. So let me show you two tricks. First, the default message, that parameter there, the last parameter that I'm using, the default message, can accept parameters. So we can use bind variables in here. And at the very end, we can pass that start date in as a parameter. So when I save, now it's actually merging that all in together. Now that's cool. And it's great for message box. But what about other functions? Here's another idea. I mean, other functions don't have these uh, replaceable parameters. So here's another idea. We can implicitly cast from a date to a string through concatenation. Here, watch this. What if we first concatenate a zero length string to the date? People code will see the concatenation and the internal order of operations will take over. It will first convert the date to a string and then concatenate to that zero length string. Basically casting the date to a string. That's pretty cool, huh? Let's save it. Let's find out. Does it work? Awesome. Okay, here. I have one more. You know, typing that whole start date out, I expended a lot of calories there. That burned a lot of calories. Do you want a shortcut for that? The caret key on your keyboard, that would be, if you look at your keyboard, that's shift six. It resolves to, when I, when I press save, it's going to resolve to the current execution context, or I should say the field within the current execution context. It only works when you're on a field. When I press save, you notice it resolves to, in this case, the start date. But here, this is how I like to think of it. You see how that caret is pointed up? It's pointing up at the field up there in the dropdown list. So I like to think of it as an editorial insert. You know, if you're editing a document, you'll use that caret insert with the text up above it saying, hey, that goes right there in the insertion point. So basically what I'm saying is, give me that. Now the content in this video is a subset of our people code material. Are you interested in learning more? Check out our website to see our latest offerings. Or here's an idea. Subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a new course. Or, even better, give us a call and let us help you develop a people tools training strategy. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.